I mean Somerville. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most important characteristics of socio-technical systems, the notion of emergence or emergent properties. There are three types of characteristic of socio-technical systems that are particularly important. One of these is this notion of emergent properties, which are properties of a system that only become apparent when we put the system together. Another is non-determinism, which means that the system will not always react in the same way when we present it with the same input. And the third is the notion of subjective behaviour, where the behaviour of the system or how, how effective the system is in supporting organisational and, and personal goals or objective depends on the interpretation of the user or the stakeholder in the system. I'll be talking about non-determinism and subjective behaviour in, in a separate video. Here I'm going to focus on emergence. There's a well-known saying that uh, the whole is more than the sum of its parts and, and this applies to systems in particular that there are emergent properties in a system and these only become apparent when we assemble the system from its components. We can't deduce the emergent property by analysing the components or these particular properties within the components and then adding them, say. The emergent property is something different from that. All systems have got lots of emergent properties. This is an example of an aircraft and you can see some of the emergent properties of that aircraft which only appear when the aircraft is assembled. Why do we get these emergent properties? Well, the emergent properties arise because of the relationships between the components in the system. So we can only measure and assess those emergent properties when these relationships have been created, that is, when the, the components have been integrated to create the system. And there are two types of emergent property. There's the notion of functional properties, which by and large are what we're trying to achieve when we are creating a system. So if we take an example of a bicycle, if we have a box of bits of a bicycle, it, they don't do anything. But when we assemble these in the right relationships, we create a transportation device. So a functional emergent property is something that the system does. And usually what we're trying to do as part of the design process. Non-functional emergent properties relate to the behaviour of the system rather than its functionality. And the illities, the, the dependabilities, the security, the safety, usability, reliability and so on are all non-functional emergent properties. Non-functional emergent properties are often particularly important for critical systems because if a system um, does not reach the right level of reliability, say, then it may be completely useless. It may not be able to be deployed and used as intended, even if it is functionally correct. Much of our development processes are geared towards ensuring that we can achieve the appropriate level of non-functional emergent property. Here's some example of non-functional properties. The volume of a system depends on how we assemble it. We can assemble it in different ways and it'll take up a different amount of space. The repairability of the system is how easy it is to repair a system when things go wrong. And that depends on accessibility of components. How easy is it to find a bit of software sometimes? Sometimes we have great difficulty in actually locating where a software is in our computer. Uh, it depends on whether or not we have the right tools to carry out the repair. The reliability is an emergent property that I'll, I'll come on to and look at it in a wee bit more detail shortly. And the security of a system is a complex emergent property. It's very hard to assess and measure security because 
the attacks that might be made on the system are something which we haven't thought of or which haven't even been devised yet by an attacker. Let's look at reliability as an emergent property. We know that reliability depends on the interrelationships between components and when we have unforeseen or unanticipated relationships we may get a system failure. Because it's practically impossible to anticipate or understand all potential component relationships in a complex system, we can never be sure that systems will not fail. We must always work on the assumption that there is some kind of failure mode remaining in the system. In a complex socio-technical system, there are three principal influences on the reliability, the hardware, the software, and the people using the system. When it comes to hardware reliability, it's about the probability of a component failure and the time it takes to repair that component and get the system back into operation. So availability as well as reliability are important. For software failure, it's again the probability that a component when presented with a correct input will produce an incorrect output but it's different, software is different from hardware reliability in a number of important ways. First of all, we know that hardware will always fail because of the laws of physics, hardware will eventually wear out. That's not true for software. Software does not suffer from normal wear and tear. For software, the other important difference is that the failures are often transient. If we reset the system in some way, either by rebooting it or simply by overwriting an incorrect value in the state, we can repair the problem. So it's often much easier to repair software than it is to repair hardware. And operator reliability. How likely is it that the operator of a system will make some kind of error? And how serious will that error be? This is an example of a very serious operator error where a, a train driver in Spain took a curve at a much higher speed than he should have done and caused an extremely serious train crash. So where does the emergence come from? The emergence comes from the fact that these different influences on reliability interact. So if we have a hardware failure this may cause the software to behave in an unexpected way. This can be misinterpreted by the operator who takes the wrong actions. These are interpreted by the software and sometimes these would actually make the hardware problem worse by say causing trying to turn on a motor when there's no coolant and so on and so forth. So we get these complex interactions between hardware, software and operation so the overall reliability of a system as an emergent property. Three particularly important characteristics of socio-technical systems are emergence, non-determinism and subjective behaviour. Emergent properties are properties of the system as a whole and they only become apparent once the system has been assembled or integrated from its components. The dependability properties, safety, security, reliability and availability are all emergent properties. So we cannot predict these in advance or we cannot accurately predict these in advance. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.